pending the you know update on Matt and, and Carmela for the information tonight, the county has four cases. Um, you can see our status with those. Obviously, the case that threw us for a loop this month was the one that was approved by the county commission on the 12th, which was successful with one condition regarding the use. I will say as an update to that project, not everyone got to hear our previous conversation. They have not made an official announcement yet. Our deadline was Friday. We made that deadline. I know they were meeting with individuals, I, I thought today about the project, but for some reason they have not announced, so I, I don't have anything official or even unofficial to report. I will tell you based on the Planning Commission special call meeting, um, that went to the County Commission meeting. The Commission ultimately approved it with one condition regarding the use. Commissioner Folsom and really the board, I will tell you that the second condition went to the attorney's office. What passed was the portion of the condition which basically talked about um, if the sale was successful, then the property would be rezoned at that time. So that portion of the condition they did make through and test and say, look, that's legitimate, and if you so choose, you can use that as a potential condition to limit the sale or actually control the zoning until the sale happens. The commission didn't put it on there, but that commission or that condition did clear the attorney's office. So that that portion went through. So just FYI, that's something where, you know, again, I would tell them, you know, I told the county attorney, sir, I just told him I didn't know, I didn't know about that condition. But that portion that limited the zoning to say, look, if this sale happens, it will be rezoned, actually did clear the attorney's office. So something to note for future reference. Um, with the four cases that we do have, we gave you some background materials. I don't have my cover sheets, but I do have my recommendations to the TRC. I finished those up this morning. So obviously I want to try to give you some materials to know what we were looking at. The first case that we have is a family estate off of Johnson Road and, and uh, New Statenville Highway. Very large piece of property, probably, well, very large considering, uh, let's see if I can get a total acreage here. I thought it was 11 acres. Yes, sir. Around 11 acres, dividing up some family land into a minor subdivision of about five or so lots. With that, they just have EA zoning. They want to cut it up into R1 so they can actually accomplish this subdivision. R1 is adjacent to the west. R10 is adjacent to the south. No, no big issues to report. They're on two paved roads. You know, nothing really out, you know, to me, anything special to be aware of for this case. So that's the history. Ultimate recommendation from staff today was... Uh, approval from all divisions. Any questions for staff? Jason, you know that? Yes, sir. Um, Jacob Eckwall, this is a piece of property on 41 South um, in between Valdosta and Dasher. Uh, we saw this property, I believe, in 2006 for a residential subdivision. It's since changed hands and the new owner would like to take a portion of it, Track 10, which is about a 22-acre portion, and would like to take that and do a um, landscape contractor business on the subject property. I don't believe his initial plans are to occupy all 22 acres, but at least he wants to do this one time, and that's his kind of vision for that, is to do some kind of landscape contractor nursery type of business. That business is currently not allowed in the zoning he has, which is R10, so he's asking for EA, which does allow for that type of commercial landscaping contractor type business. Staff looked at this request. Ultimately, um, five out of the divisions recommended for approval. Planning seems, I prefer RA zoning rather than EA because of the neighbors to the south and some of the potential neighbors around him. Um, there's some standards that you have at the very back of your packet that, that kick in when you go to an RA that are a little bit friendlier. And then zoning has yet to render her um, final recommendation on the matter. So this just came up for vote today. So I anticipate getting that before we have our next uh, main session. But ultimately, that is the only, um, I think, issue to report is there was some discussion about it going to RA rather than EA because of the neighbors around it. RA, and I gave you a list of those uses at the end of the packet, is friendlier to um, the neighbors than EA. Um, but ultimately, that is um, what they're asking for there. That is the type of business they're interested in. And that's what the case is about, is potentially R10 to EA. So beyond a recommendation from Carmela that is forthcoming, that is the only kind of discussion that really took place on the case. Is it was all for approval. It was just some debate about EA versus RA. Is that 
that little island that's chiseled out on that 10 acres, is that, is that a residence there? Somebody asked you, is that a dwelling? Sir, that's, um, I think that's Mr. Kaufman's property. I believe he has a residence, there's a residence toward the front end of that property, but I don't know if there's a residence other than just some miscellaneous storage on it, honestly. Uh, I think the residence is long 41. I don't think there's a residence to the rear. So is that that same one? I had the same, um, I was curious about this. How do you, is, is the front property that's uh, along 41, mm -hmm. is the same owner owns that, the same owner owned that property that's from his own RA? I was just curious how do you get to that property right in the middle of that island there? There's no reason. That's a great question. I can check on the ownership in the front. I don't think the survey shows us. Um, yeah, it actually shows two different owners. It shows the Kaufman and then the Wilder property. I can verify that, but it's a great question. But it's it's just really interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. It is. It is. I, I don't know how it got there. I thought it was. Well, it, it, it goes to forty one. Mm -hmm. No, there is a property line. That's Wilder property. property right here. I, I know, but. Jason. She's talking about the Kaufman property, not the subject property. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm just curious about that little island mm -hmm. of orange in there. Just... Looks like there's something oh. else up front on 41, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes. And I'm just curious how something like that could have happened. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't know. I do not know. And has Mr. Kaufman been notified? Uh, he should be receiving a letter about the rezoning, as will the all the old adjacent property owners to the south on Tobacco Road, a rezoning letter about our meeting next week and the county commission meeting in February. Your preference is EA rather than RA. My preference was RA. Your RA is, preference is RA, not EA. The applicant asked for EA. We've talked about this. He knew that was probably going to be my um, position on his case, but RA is use-wise and supplemental standards-wise is friendlier to residents and adjacent neighbors than EA is. And would RA allow the, the use that he's seeking? Yes, but it would kick in some supplemental standards, which I gave you a copy of on your last page. Okay. So you'll see how those will how those will play in. In EA, there's no supplemental standards for the use. In RA, there is. Um, but in addition to the supplemental standards, my main reasoning was really just the uses that are allowed in EA, some of which I think don't mix as well with you know an R10 style subdivision. And I just got a text from Carmel that says she's on her way. Tell me which text back to the we just left. <laughs> <laughs> so that to me is the, I feel like the debate so far with this one. Um, I have not received public comments on any of our cases so far, maybe with the exception of the last one on Union Road. I expect maybe some public comments on that. So, but with this one, you know, next to a fair amount of neighbors, don't have any public comments to report yet. It, 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 this, this is kind of a, just off top of this, this kind of a wet parcel. Yes, sir. It, it, so, uh, county health didn't have any problems going forward with the tank or anything. Was, I'm sure you got to have one out there. Sure. I know they were concerned with um, a neighborhood putting a healthy amount of septic tanks down, but I think they, I believe they can work with a contractor's office with maybe one septic tank rather than, you know, 22 acres worth of homes. So I haven't heard the type of concern that we will on a later case on this property. Okay, thank you, Jason. Yes, sir. Next case, please, sir. Uh, Fred Wilkinson uh, is asking for a rezoning of about five acres, kind of north of our last Johnson case. This is on Deerwood Road. If you drive out there, this is uh, right adjacent to the Deerwood Acres, I believe, subdivision area. The thing to watch on this case is I've been talking to Mr. Wilkinson, and he owns, I'm going to say, around 400 acres around this property. So he's asking, and honestly, I believe he's testing the market for R1 on this in this area, but ultimately, I think he's really paying attention for the larger balance of his property to the north and to the south. So ultimately, the request is to rezone five acres from EA to R1. With R1 across the street, I don't think the grounds are there for a denial, but I do just, to me, have some concern with the project. Just be careful. But honestly, the recommendation on this one for all staff, all divisions, was for approval. Um, but ultimately, the only thing that I would kind of note on this is, number one, the precedent. Number two, Deerwood Road is currently unpaved. 
So the engineer wanted to make sure that Mr. Wilkinson and his engineer are aware that, look, you're asking for five lots. Don't expect to come back and ask for five more on Deerwood. Normally five is how many he allows for improvement on a, an unapproved road. So he wants to make sure Mr. Wilkinson understands that don't ask for 15 or 20 lots on Deerwood. If you do want that many, that's fine. You just need to be ready to pay them. Is R1 compatible with the rural, rural residential designation that's in the future development plan? Yes, ma'am. When, um, when you go to the rural area, the orange color, uh -huh. it gets into allowing for R1 as an eligible zoning. But again, just because it lists it as allowable, you need to be careful still because that doesn't mean it's appropriate for all areas. So you could definitely have some debate, like one of the zonings that's listed there, I think, is a crossroads commercial. Well, just because it's listed as permitted doesn't mean this, this location is appropriate for commercial zoning. So yes, ma'am, when you get into that orange color, that rural residential color, it brings R1 to the table. But I mean, ultimately, you know, when you have a road, mm -hmm. were, granted that it's an unpaved road, but the, the future for that road eventually is going to be growth, uh, well, it already has growth on the east side of mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, I can't, I don't, the growth, <coughs> I don't know how you can stop that. I agree. From happening. I agree. If you have a road, it's going to be developed on either side. My preference for um, Mr. Wilkinson, and I think he's done some work on this, is you know just the master plan. I was thinking, look, one of the big differences between RA two and a half acres and R1 is if you're allowing for larger lots, maybe you want someone to have horses, a more rural style lot. To me, horses and livestock is the biggest difference between RA and R1. So I think ultimately he wants to test the market, see how R1 does. But I agree with you that trying to make a case to a, to go against R1 when it's literally so close in the area is very, very, very hard. So I didn't, um, I chose not to fight that battle and recommend for its approval. What is that um, in the corner on the... That's a Lowndes County Fire Station. And right now it's a volunteer station, but it's definitely something to be aware of. Okay. Right there at the corner of New Statenville, south of the property, is the Lowndes County Fire Station. So you, you expect him to, to go to Florida to do something all 200 acres? 400. 400 acres? Yes, sir. I, I, knowing Mr. Wilkinson, I've got a chance to get to know him throughout these conversations. Um, he, I believe, just wants to make sure if I, before I rezone and spend the money on engineering, et cetera, for 400 acres, is this, are people interested in buying an acre lot out here? And we've seen more growth and development, but I think he just wants to try to test the market with this case before he invests for the entire plan. And this is the same Wilkinson, you know, you've, um, Riverton used to own the mill, same, same family. Same Wilkinson textile type family. Can I, can I ask you something, Jason? Just yes, sir. information on these unimproved roads. It, it, if they allow houses to go in there, they don't have to be paved, they just have to be improved? Or what, what's the rule on that? I know it's came up before the sure. county didn't want a subdivision on it. That's right. That's right. Typically what the county engineer will do is I believe he has the authority to pave, to ask for the road to be improved or paved with one house or one lot. But he's obviously learned, okay, well that's not always realistic or fair to burden one property owner with the improvement of an entire road. So typically what I've seen him do is say, look, as a developer or a family landowner, I will let you develop up to five new lots on, an, on a county dirt road. When you go past five lots, then he's going to talk to you about paving that road. And so I've seen him be consistent on that for years about, look, I believe he has the authority to improve it on, on one lot, but he tries to give some flexibility for small scale development before really tripping it up with, you know, a developer who might come in here and say, well, I want to build a cul-de-sac with 20 lots. Well, that's fine, but you're going to be expected to improve that road. So my sense is he's based that trigger on about a five lot threshold. So that's just a judgment call on his part. Yes, sir. I think that's, I think honestly by ordinance, I think he has the authority to trip it on one lot. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think that protection is actually good for the taxpayers of Lowndes County to have that. Because if you have a parcel where someone builds, you know, for example, uh, um, something that's already zoned on a dirt road for some apartments. Well, they might not subdivide at all, but certainly apartments are going to trigger a pretty good traffic uh, amount on that dirt road, so he can trigger it on developments like that. So that protection is, is there, I think, for a good reason. 
just curious. Something similar came up before they. Yes, sir. And I know the case you're talking about, and I think when they heard, you know, okay, you're not wanting to do five lots, you're wanting to do 50 plus, he definitely wanted to be protective of that road. All right, Jason. Uh, yes, sir. Last case, um, Union Road. This is what we expect some comments on. Um, I don't know the situation with the family about why we are here, but ultimately what we are being asked to do is consider a rezoning of about 114 acres from EA to RA zoning, so from five acre zoning to two and a half acre zoning. I think the developer's intent is to actually develop what's called a conservation subdivision, where you allow for 114 acres would allow for, let's see, um, 20, 40, potentially 45, you know, we'll, we'll call it 44 lots um, with this particular development. And as a part of that, the the remaining balance of the property will be protected in like the conservation state. So ultimately I think that's what you're looking at is the developer wants to develop a, a smaller number of lots um, but protect the balance. Um, what I mean by that is instead of cutting out 44 two and a half acre lots, he would cut out 44 one acre lots and then the rest of the property would be protected in a green space type of protection. So that is his intent. So you said one acre lots? He could actually go down in density, but the number of lots is restricted to what's allowed under the current zoning. So if the zoning is RA, you take the total acreage, divide it by two and a half, that gives you your density count. The county will say, okay, we will let you develop at a smaller lot size. Hey man, we will let you develop at a smaller lot size. However, you have to take the rest of the property and permanently protect it. That way he doesn't go through and do some kind of backdoor R1 type of rezoning. So can you tell us again how big is this, how, what's the size of this property? 114 acres. And this, the number of lots is currently restricted to how, how much per lot? Two and a half acres per lot. If the rezoning is approved, it would be two and a half acres per lot. But he would be allowed to do one acre if he put the rest of it in something like in mm -hmm. two. He, he um, I believe he considered asking for an acre zoning or a half acre zoning, but from a planning standpoint, this area is just kind of isolated between Hayhira and North Lowndes. So I told, I just don't believe that one of those zonings would be um, supportable from a planning standpoint. I think it's, un, it's not unreasonable to ask, but he said, okay, well, rather than going to R21 or R1, we talked about this conservation subdivision idea, which allows him to get a smaller lot size and still sell at that price point, but also protect the remainder or balance of that property. Well, would a plan development do the same thing? He could. But he, it would be more specific. Yes. And would know more. That's what right. The plans are because this is kind of. It is. I mean, conservation subdivisions are allowed as a matter of right in two zoning classifications, EA and RA. So those rural zoning classifications are the only ones that allow for this kind of plan. Plan development would allow for this, and we could accommodate that, but then the developer has to commit to that site plan up front. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yes. And then we would know exactly what yep. we're... That's right. So to me, the alternatives here are he either develops a subdivision at two and a half acres, a lot, or he does the conservation style concept, which lets him reduce that lot size, but keep the overall same number of lots on the, uh, on the density side. But he would be able to put 88 home. Um, you said he had 44 at two and a half acres. He would be allowed 40, we would let him send about into 44 lots. 45 if you really try to tweak it to that 114 number. So he'd be able to lower the, the lot size, but he could not increase the number of buildings. Yes, sir. In the conservation. That's area. right. So there are some building knowns. Yes. Okay. I the density would remain the same. But we, we, the trade-off is, is if you agree to protect some of the land, we will let you go with a smaller lot size. So the lot numbers don't change, but we agree to let him go with a smaller lot size if he protects some of that area. Did I miss that percentage? Um, I believe the minimum is 30%. I believe the minimum... 30% protected. That's right. That's right. But, um... I mean, this is this is a 114 acres in the mm -hmm. middle of agricultural mm -hmm. 
land that's in the future uh, plan, it says it's, it's still reserved for agricultural and forestry. That's right. I don't understand how by allowing 45 units mm -hmm. in here is, is in compliance or it's, it conforms to that future development. Sure. I don't understand that. In future development, remember the green area does, does allow for RA zoning. So to me, okay, duly noted, if you look at the zoning map and you see to the south, RA, how close it is on Thompson, and also to the north, how you have that existing R10 subdivision, we've had multiple requests out here for residential development. So I can see the next update of the comprehensive plan potentially looking at this area and saying, okay, you know, we're getting these requests. How serious are you about protecting this area, or do you see eventual growth between Hayhara and Stone Creek as, as reasonable? Yeah. So I think that conversation will happen. I will tell you that um, I just appreciate the developer's respect, because I thought he was going to apply for a half acre or one acre zoning, and I just told him, I was like, you can apply, I just won't support you. I just don't think this area is close enough to those densities to do it. I said, what I, what I will do is I will work with you on RA zoning, because I can see the writing on the wall with the update. So let me ask you, just, you might have said this, so if he agrees to put a minimum of 30% into protected, that you would still allow him the 45 lots at one acre? Yes. Yes. But if he says no on a 30%, you, he still can get 45 two and a half acre lots. That's right. That's right. And that's any EA or RA zoning, that concept is, is out there. The only hurdle we found with it is um, the regulations want you to do some type of combined septic tank that we just have not been able to get the health department to be okay with. So if you do a conservation subdivision, there's potentially a built-in variance for that. We've done that successfully, but so far no one has completely gone through with the conservation subdivision idea. The Tyler family, sir? Yeah. And uh, David Deloach is the developer. I'll sit down here. Do you, you anticipate any pushback? I have heard that there are there is going to be there is going to be some potential opposition to this request. Reason being, I'm assuming density right now, but I don't know yet. I wish I did. I just don't know yet the specifics of. Okay, well, I understand your body, but what what do you not like? Or do you, do you not? To me, the main difference between EA and RA is, is density. So I'm assuming, you know, if he can do this conservation concept right now, then your concern is not for 22 lots, but you will object at 20 or at 44. I, I'm, I have yet to understand that. So this may be an early question, but is the developer planning on, is there, is there currently county water on this side? No. The only services are a force main that runs along Union Road. It's a sewer line that I do not anticipate the county to say you have to connect to a force main. So I think they'll probably do individual well and septic or a community water system and septic. Well, that's what, that's what I asked you. But if, if they can tap into the force main, mm -hmm. then each individual lot order can put their own well there. If they tap into the force main, yes, you could potentially see a lot size that is, I think the minimum lot size is 15,000 square feet, sir? Yeah, to do your well. Yeah. That's right. Well, in septic tank, of course, you've got to have 44,000. That's right. So you could, if that happens, that would be incredibly expensive, but you're right, you could reduce the size of that lot. You still wouldn't be able to impact the density, but you could still have a smaller lot. Still have the same density. This location is a no-brainer. And I'm telling you, Celine's question is on, but we've had some interest in between the city of Hira and North Aldosta in multiple subdivisions, and so far I've been able to, you know, I've been respecting the fact that you can ask for that, but I won't support a half acre subdivision or a one acre subdivision. But I agreed on this one for at least two and a half acres because I can see there's pressure on this area. School systems, transportation, et cetera, there's, there's pressure for growth on this area. Luke? I'm much pushback, yes, I did. Well, I, know, I, I know Joe said about me, Mr. Breaker, you know being pushed back? I have not heard anything yet. I just know the people around it and... Yes, sir. Uh, they're farmers, and that land's always farmland, so they're going to be continuing to push for that. The last request we had that really was fairly contentious in this area was for a, I thought it was for a manufacturing or a commercial right zoning the road there. that was denied, but that was kind of the last case we had, and, you know, this, this who area did. That, who owns that property to the south? Uh, the doctor, The McLean's. Oh, okay. And I, I, 
you know, I, I think the last person he spoke for was Judge McLean. I don't think it's like the Tyson yeah. side. I think it was Judge McLean who owns the property in the South. Okay. Any, any other questions for staff? Jason, just an FYI, mm -hmm. your counting portion today took 28 minutes. <laughs> Duly noted, sir. Duly noted. That's why I said, you know, you were probably being more reasonable than I was. Are you going to present the city cases? 